Welcome to the ID10T podcast number 1055. ID10T.com slash sign up gets you on the ID10T email list. Now we don't send stuff every day, maybe once a week, just uh, stuff we're working on, maybe some inspirational stuff, maybe some stuff we threw up in the shop, maybe updates on when the comedy tour is going to resume, you know, stuff like that. So sign up there or you can follow us on Instagram um, at ID10T. That's enough about my stuff. Let's talk about you, the ID10T community. Sarah writes, my friend and I recently started a podcast after many years of talking about it. We have lots uh, of long and weird nerdy conversations and would often say that after we should have recorded them. So here we are. We posted two podcasts talking about our general nerd love and then our nerd origin stories. This week we are planning on recording one about our comedy loves. If you want to hear two British nerds talking about nerdy stuff and funny stuff and writing slash creativity stuff, then you might like us. Find us on SoundCloud at Live Long and Nerd. This episode is someone whom I adore, Malik Pancholi, who played Sanjay in Sanjay and Craig. He's been on a ton of stuff and he's in Phineas and Ferb. Um, he, uh, was Jack Donaghy's assistant on 30 Rock, but he is just the dearest, sweetest, and also a really funny dude. And I, there's a lot of Sanjay and Craig talking here. If you never saw Sanjay and Craig, it was a show on Nickelodeon that ran for a few years. And, uh, I loved it. It was a super punk rock show on Nickelodeon, in my in my opinion. But it's just about a kid and his talking snake pet. And I play Craig, the talking snake pet. Um, one of my favorite things. Well, the artwork on the show was great. The writing was subversive, but also accessible to young people. Um, but the music on the show was also fantastic. And there was. Um, a guy just sent me a, a message or uh, on uh, Instagram recently. His name is Jonathan Highlander, and he did some of the music on the show. But he said the lion's share of the music uh, was done by a guy named Matt Mahaffey. And Matt, some of the songs that Matt wrote on that show are so amazing and catchy that I still hum and sing them. Um, but it just shout out to those dudes for adding an even... Uh, another incredible element to that show. Uh, I might post, we did a song called Our Block on the show with Snoop Dogg, and it was really fun. And so I might post that on Instagram. Additional shout-outs go to Jim Dershberger, Jay Howell, and Andreas Trolf, who uh, created Sanjay and Craig. And uh, it was always so much fun to record with those dudes. And lastly, we talk, I think we maybe mentioned in the podcast that we, uh, so Malik wrote um, a beautiful book called The Best at It, which is available wherever books are sold. And we talk uh, a lot about maybe giving some away in a contest. That's a little challenging right now because I don't think we can really like go to the post office and mail the books out. So we have a few copies of the book signed. So we will very soon um, do some sort of a contest so we can get those books out to people because, you know, you should read it. And uh, if you follow us again on Instagram at ID10T, then we will uh, give you details about that. So that's enough of my yammering. Here is the ID10T podcast number 1055 with my friend Malik Pancholi. Best Friends Hall of Fame. Oh, you know, as we're, I feel like I've been wearing this all day just for you. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I don't even think I even have one of those. Where did really? you get that? I'm wearing my Sanjay and Craig t-shirt. Yay. I don't remember where. I mean, I must have gotten Is there something it. on the back or is it just that? I think it just says Sanjay and Craig. Oh, I don't think I have one of those. God I gotta, I, I'll one. see if I, I remember where I got it. I don't know if, if I... Had it made? If, I didn't have it made <laughs> uh, or if... Maybe I got, maybe I took it from Nickelodeon. I have no idea. 
But it's it's yeah. like sometimes when you work on a show, sometimes you really do have to uh, take things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, may, I can't remember where I got. I don't know if I. I don't know if maybe if Jay Howell gave it to me or someone. Yeah. But, it, uh, but I but I have two. I have two Sanjay and Craig shirts. I have this one, and then I have a. Uh, a shirt that looks like it's for the band the Dixons. Yes, I think I have that. Is it yeah. black? It's black with like yeah, a lot white, of stuff and it's on black it. Black and white. Yeah, it's I a black and white shirt. One, but I yeah. like that. Yeah. I love that. All right, take it off. Give it to me. That's okay, good. all right. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is basically the uh, this is the Sanjay and Craig podcast that the world has been love clamoring it. for <laughs> yes. for all time. You, let's see who for else years been on the now. podcast. You've been on. Linda was on earlier this year. Oh, yeah? Kunal was on probably, oh, my God, like eight years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt Jones is. I don't think Matt Jones has been on. Oh, he hasn't? Yeah, no. he on. Doesn't he have, like, a new... He has something new that's... Ha- he's, like, El a Camino. bad... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's going to be fun to talk oh, about. Oh, my God, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That show... And then we'll talk about a lot of other things, but I just have to say, Sanjay and Craig was one of my favorite things I've ever been a part of is that right yes yeah it was so fun it was so fun it was such a strange little show <laughs> it was such a strange show but also like i think a show that sort of one of the few 2d animation shows that even gets made anymore yeah um i mean there's still you know rick and morty is you know right, mainly right, 2d right, right. with some cg stuff in there but but uh, I don't know. That show was just really fun. The only the only problem that I ever had with the show was that Craig screams so much oh gosh, that yes. it <laughs> like I would do these sessions. I had to start asking for like I can only do it. I can't do a four hour session because <laughs> right. everything is like what? Whoa, dude! You know, like everything. That fucking character was on eleven I all mean, the time. The both of us. I remember they would they would literally stack lozenges next to the uh, music stand where we were recording yeah. <laughs> to keep us, like, healthy yeah. through it all. Yeah, that was... And, that was, and the uh, storylines were... Like, there was a whole episode... Matt Jones's character, Hector, was amazing. But there was a whole episode devoted to how he had never thrown up. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so we keep trying to get him to puke the entire episode. That's right. And finally, at the end, we get him to look at his own butt in a mirror, and he throws up. <laughs> It was such a strange, wonderful, so crazy, <laughs> so crazy. I got it. So I'm I'm doing these middle school visits as part of the this book tour for for my book, and I go and I show them some of the cartoon stuff I've done just to like get in with them, and I show them Sanjay and Craig, and I'm surprised like kids kids watch it, like kids watched it, you know, because I feel like it's been a few years now. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it's still out, and then I just did one recently where uh, I played a little clip, and everyone's like, "Who did you play?" <laughs> because they, they thought I was the dad, just because the dad's like so much browner. <laughs> <laughs> but Sanjay, I was like, no, I'm Sanjay. Like, <laughs> no, I was, not, I was like the dad had like one line in the clip I played. You think I was like, you think I'd play that whole like <laughs> <laughs> just for that? Yeah. Well, it's, it's I played the very first. It was like one of the very first episodes where we were like, it was the butt transplant episode. There's a lot of butt humor, tons of butt and fart. There the were show. there were like whole fart episodes. Yes, like entire fart. We episodes. had a fart jar. Yes. We had a fart <laughs> where we saved farts. <laughs> And I don't think it was like a gross thing. It was like it was like a treasure, like these these farts that we loved in a mason jar. I don't remember growing up that you could say the word fart on television. And we said it. I think it got to the point where eventually, I think Jim and Jay, Jim Dershberger and Jay Howe were like, yeah, I think maybe we. I think the network's like maybe tone it down a little bit <laughs> right. on the farts. But you know, the thing with a Nickelodeon show is that once you get to three seasons. They effectively can just run them forever. Yeah. And it turns yeah. out kids will watch the same thing <laughs> right. over and over and over again. So at a certain yeah. point, they're just like, yeah, we don't need to make, you know, yeah. we have whatever, a hundred and some of these. And so I, I kind of wish we'd had one more season because I feel like the show is like, it was getting so crazy. It would have been fun to see what would have happened in that. We, we did three, right? I think we did three, three? seasons. Yeah. 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 It's funny. I did I, I did Phineas and Ferb, yep. which has been like on forever. We started in 2006 mm-hmm. and we're just... We're putting out a movie that comes out next month. Oh my god! So we're still recording. I mean, it's been like I can't do the math. That's thirteen years of That's recording crazy. on one cartoon, but it was only four seasons because it's that same thing. I mean, we made, I think we made more episodes maybe than uh, Sanjay and Craig, but they just they just play them over and over and over, over and, and over and over again. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah. I came I came on to Sanjay and Craig off a show called Back at the Barnyard, and Barnyard uh-huh. was another show that we did for three seasons, and then they were just like, yeah, we can just fuck, we yeah. can run these forever. But the I think the weird unfortunate corporate truth is that 
shows that can sell a lot of toys Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tend to be on longer because it's basically a commercial for toys. Yeah. And I don't believe Barnyard had like a big toy uh, play. And Mm -hmm. I don't think Sanjay and Craig had a big toy play. Like SpongeBob is a like a billion dollar a year industry. And Dora, I think, is also like a billion dollar a year industry. But Turtles. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Never ending reboots of the Turtles. I I feel like we could have had some merchandising. I was like, like, I remember going to Comic-Con and being like, where are our... Look at like the T-shirt you're wearing. I was yeah. like, where are these T-shirts? I feel like kids would like those. Or where's the where's the toy snake? Yeah, toy snake. Where right? is the toy snake? <laughs> I don't know. I I I would like to. I would like answers to these questions too. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna dig deep <laughs> into the well, Nickelodeon archives. The thing about Sanjay and Craig that I loved is that there are two schools of thought for effectively like kids programming. Mm. And one is a product of sort of science and research and psychology, which is, you know, where you get shows that are specifically geared toward a kid's brain. Mm -hmm. It's like Mm -hmm. we know how to engage kid using science, where to put colors and which quadrants of the screens or whatever. The problem with that kind of programming is that it is excruciating for the parents. (laughs) The great thing about a show like Sanjay and Craig is that there's a whole weird layer of like – stoner and or (laughs) adult humor in it as well and so i feel like you can you know much in the same that my parents could watch the muppet show with me yeah this is a show that you could watch with your kids and maybe not want to you know stab yourself in the temple with an ice pick because (laughs) you're 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 just watching like quote unquote kids humor there's something for everyone on it and i that's what i was really proud of with the show i thought they did such a great job with that and it was real i mean i remember reading stuff about how they wanted to create something um, I can't remember the words now, but strange, wonderful, and beautiful, maybe, I think yeah. was like sort of their motto. And it was all of that. It was strange, and it was pretty wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Fart jars are so wonderful. Yeah. And it was beautiful. Like, it was, I mean, maybe that's kind of what you're talking about with, like, the 2D animation, that old school look, but the colors were great. I remember, like, the posters, that beautiful purple yeah. tree yeah. that we're in. It's just like, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a pretty magical show about farts and butts. Well, yeah, and, like, <laughs> and, you know, it's like they... The the creators were like, you know, skate punks and yeah. like punk rock dudes. And so it, it very much had that it very much had that vibe. Yeah. You know, and I yeah. felt I felt like we were that show at Nickelodeon too. Totally. Sort of like the punk rock it, it within the Nickelodeon world, like the punk rock show. Yeah, yeah. We were like we were like sort of like the outlier, the sort of like bad boy of cartoons. I know. I <laughs> Also, also God, Jay they and job. Jim, these like skate, they were like Northern California, right? They were like Northern California, like skater dudes who did a zine, I think. Like, is about, that what it came? Yeah, I think that's where it came from. I don't know exactly if I'm, I might be making up some facts here, but I also think it's remarkable that they wrote a show that had, well, a lead snake, no, but that had, had like yeah. a lead uh, half Indian American character, and they yeah. were just like two white dudes from San Francisco, and thought that was like cool and fun, and created the show that I think was really unlike. I, I think Sanjay was the first. Indian American character that was a lead on a network cartoon. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a Pooh, obviously, which is that's a whole thing. That's a whole other yeah. thing. But 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 <laughs> yeah. the, but the thing about yeah. Sanjay is that his uh, yes, he was an Indian American kid, but it but that didn't define like they, they, the jokes weren't at the expense of that. Yeah, like and at all. By yeah. all by all accounts, he was a regular kid. Yeah, and yeah. you know, and 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 that I think. That kind of – and please correct me if I'm wrong, but that kind of diversity in storytelling is important because it just basically is like, yeah, this is normal. Like this isn't right. weird. Like there's nothing jokey about that. Yeah. He's a regular kid with regular stuff and that's good for other kids to see, I 100%. think. A hundred percent. I think it's like – like if if do you remember there was like a review that came out right around New York Comic Con time? He said something about the problem with Sanjay and Craig is that uh, Sanjay isn't Indian enough. So what's the point of him being Indian American or half Indian? Because because the mom was Caucasian and his dad was Indian, and he was like he was like if he's not going to be more Indian, then it should just be a white character because kids can relate to that. Ew. And and people were like very offended by that, rightfully so. But I think that's the thing is, I think. Um, you know, like I was a pretty like American, whatever that even means. Like mm-hmm. I don't even know like what that like how we even define that anymore. But uh, a pretty Americanized kid who I guess according to these kids, I don't look like Sanjay. I look more like, more like the dad. <laughs> but but who you know, like my experience was was a lot like this cartoon characters. I didn't I didn't spend the whole day like in Indian clothes eating Indian food and doing you know. So like the fact that they wrote a cartoon that was reflective of an experience. That I think a lot of um, brown or half brown kids in this country grow up with 
is pretty remarkable. And then also, like you said, he's but he's relatable to everybody. Right. Like anyone. You know, I imagine African American kids could relate to him or Japanese American. You know what I mean? Anyone. Or Caucasian. He's a kid. Yeah. He, he's, he's a kid. Just, he's a kid doing kid stuff. And he yeah. you know, and he has uh, a unique background in his neighborhood, but it doesn't it, and it's important. His heritage obviously import his heritage is important, but it doesn't like but again, it's not the expense of the jokes. Right. right. And he's you know, and again, you know, and it's funny that we're talking about this was like because it's just like the fart jar, you know, what I I mean? know but I know. again, as a kid, you know, like when I was growing up, I would have had a fart jar, you know, like that. And also yeah. the idea that um, his best friend is, you know, trying so hard, to, like the fact that Craig would always put on shirts and didn't have arms and, and, <laughs> right. and it just, and they just put a wig on him and he had a fucking tail, no <laughs> totally. limbs, no limbs, you know, and, and but, no one seemed to notice at that, all. that there were no arms coming at out all. Of yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they, they didn't seem to notice that he was a snake and had a pointy beak basically, <laughs> right. you know, right. I mean, to me, that was a show about acceptance and growing up, you yeah. know, just like being a kid and, you know, like yeah. what's important to kids. It it was interesting because I feel like I feel like as kind of raunchy and as 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 sort of like uh, you know like the sort of rebel show that it was. I do think every episode had at, at the heart of it heart. Sure. Like I think I think it was about this friendship. You know, yeah, it was about like hearts and farts, two, hearts and farts, <laughs> <laughs> which really go together. <laughs> well, but when you think about it, though, in a way, if you know, like rather than you know hammering. Kids in, who are watching and being like, you should be accepting because it's important and because right. you have to understand it. You know, you kind of sneak in with the fart jokes and that opens their mind to accept all the other stuff. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. do, you know, in as much as we can sort of make fun of the fart joke, like they do serve a function in a <laughs> <Yes>. weird way. <laughs> it's access. It's, a- it's getting, it's making it accessible to kids who love farts. The fart joke may be the most important literary device. <laughs> they should be teaching whole classes at NYU on fart jokes. Using the fart joke to make your point. I saw, okay, so I, I, uh, so um, uh, Willem Dafoe's doing the podcast in a couple days, and I went to see a screening of a movie that he is in with Robert Pattinson. And okay. it's the two of them in this lighthouse, and it's black and white, and it's very arty. And the theater was probably 75 people, a lot of, like, distinguished film critics, uh-huh. like reviewers. And I'm just there to watch it so I can talk to him about the movie. And his character in the movie farts a lot. Almost every time Willem Dafoe <laughs> farted in this movie, and it's not a comedy, but almost every time he farted, the fucking audience laughed. <laughs> it was just like, Wait, what? Why was he? Was he just a gassy guy? <laughs> he was just a crude, you know. He was just a crude right. character who was basically, you know, like trying to dominate this other character, you know, Robert Pattinson's character, and he uh-huh. was. You know, he would just – he was loose with his farts, you know. Yeah. It took place in the – probably the late 1800s or whatever, early 1900s. And so – but every time he would walk and then, you know, <laughs> it's like the audience would laugh. And I'd be like, you know what? <laughs> Fucking farts are universal. We're watching the artiest movie I've seen in recent memory oh with a bunch of distinguished crit- critics. Yeah. <laughs> and yet fart equals laugh every do you, time. Do you, was the filmmaker – was that the point? Was it supposed to be funny, do you think? I don't – I mean, I it might have been a – for lack of a better term, a release of the pressure uh-huh, uh-huh, in, the, uh-huh. in the tension of the scene. <laughs> but it also was – it also nice, informed, nice, very nice. It also informed <laughs> – Kind of like what this character was, yeah. which was kind of a, he was kind of a blowhard, yeah. And yeah. so again, and so it, um, you know, it, it 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 did serve the character, right? Right. But it still got laughs, you know, like totally. every time. Well, I think like that's the, like human bodily functions are kind of funny, and I feel like when you, <laughs> and I feel like when you're like, and by the way, yeah, we, <laughs> but like I feel like, but I feel like twelve. I think the Sanjay was supposed to be around twelve, right? Twelve yeah, or thirteen, 12, something yeah. Like that, yeah. And I feel. And Craig, who knows? But who knows? Yeah, in yeah. snake years, I almost kind of but, feel like he, Craig was like a thirty-year-old dude, you know, because he always had these really weird uh, adult ideas, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know. He was. I but there's, he had a little more wisdom, maybe you know, than yeah. Sajay. He might have been like eleven in human years, but snake year, maybe snake years were different. I, I don't know. Right. Yeah. He'd shed a few skins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but I just feel like that, like that, is also part of the thing that they were discovering. I think that's like not to again like you know, analyze the use of fart in media. But I think that, like, they're, like, at that age, you're like, ooh, the body. Yeah. So crazy, if, especially if you're, like, a 12-year-old boy. And I think that's the thing that's, like, super relatable for anyone who watches a show, even if they're not 
Sanjay. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. Well, it was a fun show. And my, you know, I know you were basically, you were living in New York most of the yeah. time yeah. of the show. And so it was rare that we ever got to record together. But I always liked if we ever got that opportunity uh. because I always thought it, they did a good job of creating the chemistry so we could record independently of each other. Yeah. And I always enjoyed when we were doing ADR being able to see like, oh, that's what Malik did. And so I'll try to fit into what to that energy. You know, it was always yeah. really fun. Yeah. But I had always wished we could have recorded know, to, as a group because that – Well, they were so smart. Cause I, so I think when we first started, all of us were in L.A. Like I, yeah. I was doing a series in L.A. and I think Tony was in L.A. and um, But then Tony went off to like uh, wherever they shot Veep. I think Baltimore maybe. Oh, right. And yeah, I think uh, Linda, Tony Hale. Yeah, Tony Hale and Linda Hunt. Linda Hunt. <laughs> Linda, <laughs> Linda Cardellini. Linda Cardellini. Linda <laughs> Hunt. That's so crazy that I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Cardellini went off to like Florida, I think, to yeah. shoot Bloodlines. Yeah. And then I'd gone back to New York. And so we were all like separate. But I, I think they were pretty smart because I think when we did the pilot, we were all, all here. But then for those first couple episodes, they I remember they brought me back to LA so we could be in the room together because we were, I think we're trying to figure out what that what that friendship is. And it was like really interesting because I think there was like a, like a push and pull between Sanjay and Craig about like, like I feel like Craig was sort of the leader, but Sanjay was like trying to be the leader, and Craig was like the the character who was like, "I'm gonna help you get there. I'm gonna help you get there," which I think is also so like beautiful in a friendship, you know? Yeah. Just like that's what it is. Well, Craig was also the character that wrestled the most with his ego. <laughs> like he was <laughs> yes. the one who could get way out of control if that was fed. Like his intentions were good, yeah, but he was also kind of the fuck up friend where. You you know, one minute he'd be super cool, and the next minute he would have eaten all of your candy and been like, what? <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> Don't look at me. Don't look at my belly. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look. But it really was a good – yeah, it was a good balance and a good – I mean, like, that's one of those shows that if they if they ever came back and said, like, hey, would you guys want to do – I would do oh an, I would do more of those in a heartbeat. But I, so I feel fun. like that ship is probably sailed. Uh, yeah, so sad. Like well, maybe this podcast sailed. will be, like, the beginning. Oh, we're going to bring it back, yeah. you guys. <laughs> Everything gets fucking remade. I know. Well, now this is the season of it, right? This is the time for remakes. What did you come – what did you – what was it – was it Thirty Rock? What were you doing at the time when that? No, I was doing Whitney Cummings show. You were Whitney. doing Whitney show, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. With Chris D'Elia, who was also on our uh, on our cartoon, playing. I just blanked. Oh, that's his right. Oh, fuck! Character. I totally forgot. I yeah. totally forgot that. Yeah. I totally forgot. Is that, that so guy. crazy? Remington Tough Lips. Yes, that's right. That's right. What a crazy character. Who that was, was such a bizarre? <laughs> I don't know how you would pitch that character. He was a former like '80s TV star. Yeah. Like, that owned a trailer park, <laughs> right? That didn't wear a shirt a lot of the time. Yeah. That you know, yeah. Oh my god, that was a crazy character. Yeah, and also like sort of like very weirdly adult. Like I feel like that character like pushed them into some very adult situations. Do you know what I mean? Like he was always, like you said, he was always shirtless. And yeah. Kinda like kind of like trying to relive his past. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 It was such a bizarre like. On paper, if you read that, you're like, what the fuck is it? But then you watch <laughs> right. this and you're like, oh, it all makes sense. Yeah. yeah, it all makes sense. That is so crazy, right? Like, what, where did we live that they were like, there's a fading movie star here living in a trailer park? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and everyone hangs out at a, at a place that serves dirty wings. <laughs> yes. Like, they just serve these wings that are, like, kind of gross, but everyone loves them. <laughs> right. Yeah. I still have uh. that. Uh, I think I, made a, I may have attached it to the end of the podcast that Linda was on, but... The music on that show was phenomenal. Like, mm-hmm. I wish I could remember so I could properly credit the guy who did all the songs for the show. But there were a lot of songs that popped up on the show, and they were so catchy. Yeah. And so I have a couple of them, and I listen to that Snoop song. Oh, my gosh. So many times. I got to rap with Snoop. We yes. got to rap with Snoop. Yes. So crazy. Yeah, I didn't get to I mean, meet not him, though. In did person. you get to meet no, him? No, 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 no. no. We just had to add yeah. it later. But, uh, but it bad. still counts. Yeah. It yeah. still totally counts. I think he was on an episode of Weeds, too. Like, I feel like Snoop has been, like, following me around. <laughs> what did you... What was your... Was your background comedy? No, I mean, I... I well, I studied theater, and then I went to um, Yale Drama School. Yeah. But in between, I did do a little bit at the Groundlings, but I'm, like, I'm not, like... I don't think of myself as an improviser. I went through, like, the first couple levels of the Groundlings, but it was, like, so long ago. And I and I did love it, but I think I've just, like, consistently got gotten cast in comedies. Like, yeah. it's, just, it's just kind of where I my sweet spot is but yeah 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 but i don't think of myself like i feel like all that improv training was super helpful and and really fun and i and i had such a good time oh my gosh i remember like the my like level one class we would have like these insane parties and you're just like it's such a it's such a bonding thing i think improv 
But I don't think of myself as like an improviser. Got it. Yeah, yeah. But you do, yeah? Well, I'm not. I, I Many years ago, probably like 20 years ago, there's a timeline where I went through the Groundlings track. You did too, yeah. But but I said there's a separate parallel universe where I chose that. But I took I took classes at Groundlings for a little while, and then kind of realized like, no, I'm on a, I'm a stand up. I want to do stand up. Yeah. I, I I don't. All my tendencies are towards stand up, and the stand up tendencies kill improv scenes. Yeah. Which is like oh, the, that's interesting. The tendency to sort of like make jokes or like take over the scene or you know it just yeah it, it, it's or to second guess I, I don't know there's so many things about it that i just was like nah I, stand-up is really what, yeah. what my heart is and you know improv is not i mean i kind of had a similar in a different way so like i mean now i'm writing so it's so interesting but i think i stopped when i got to the writing level because i was like this doesn't feel organic to what i want to be getting out of these classes like i wasn't trying to write my own sketches yeah i mean now i look back and i'm like oh that's probably like, very useful for actor training but yeah but I was like, oh, it was fun. It was fun while we were just like playing around. Yeah. And then when it be like, when it was like, hey, write a monologue and bring it in, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want. <laughs> Sorry, no, I don't <laughs> yeah, want, I don't want to do that. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks. It no, also I'm got good. like very competitive, is what I remember too. And so this thing that was super, super fun becomes like, oh, everyone's kind of vying for, you know, a place in the com- the Sunday company or whatever it is. And and so like, and I was like, oh, I think like I, I came here for something that's different than what a lot of people come here for, which is like to be on that improv track. Yes, <laughs> it's like you're vying for the spot in the sunday company and then when you're in the sunday company you're vying for a spot in the main company yeah. and there are very few spots open up and then maybe from there you're vying for a spot on snl like it's, <laughs> right, right there's always something you're vying for and it doesn't have to be that way no, but yeah but at a certain point yeah i would imagine people are like okay well i've i'm on level four and like what am right. i where's this going yeah you know yeah. like what am i gonna yeah, do there's with this? 15 of us in this class <laughs> <laughs> Only three make the company. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just a, a comedy battle royale, <laughs> yeah. basically, where everyone tries to like duke it out. But I'm glad that you're writing now, and your book, um, the best at it, the best at it. That's right. Is yeah. the uh, it does it? Is there anything about the? Um, was there anything about Sanjay and Craig that in like telling the story of a kid trying to you know figure out who he, make his own way, figure out what his path in life was, who he is? Was there anything about Sanjay and Craig that sort of inspired you to say like, oh, I think I want to tell an extended story. I want to reach people in you know in the in a in a similar way. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I mean I didn't uh, it didn't come like you know right on the heels of Sanjay and Craig, and it didn't come sort of like out of that experience. But I will say that doing a cartoon like that and and hearing from um, parents who had biracial kids, and I don't know if Jim and Jay ever told you this or not, but they'd be like, we get all these notes that are like, it's so important that my kid sees themselves in a car, see themselves in a cartoon um, and a cartoon, which means like not even a real person. Like it was meant so much that they were like seeing a cartoon character who looked like them, you know? And I, and I, so I think, I think like that, um, and even playing like Baljeet, I'm Phineas and Ferb, where it was like all these brown people were like, oh, my, my kids love seeing a version of themselves. You know, again, like a crazy cartoon character. It did kind of make me think about the fact that there's so little um, representation in so many forms of media, mm-hmm. including um, books for young people. But the book, I mean, it, it kind of came out of my own sort of, I think – kind of understanding what the lack of representation for me as a kid, uh, like what the effect of that was over time. You know, I didn't, as a kid, I didn't even realize it because I loved books. I loved books so much. I loved TV and cartoons and, and movies, but I never saw myself in those. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, there's that double layer of, I wanted to be an actor. And so I was like, well, if I, how am I ever going to be an actor if I, if no one looks like me in, in these in television or film. Um, but I also think like never seeing myself in a story made me think like, Oh, maybe there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Like maybe I need to be somebody else, uh, in order to just sort of, to be honest, like exist Mm -hmm. because there's, because no one's telling my story. And there's a, there's a concept in middle, like literature for young people. Um, it's, it's like this amazing concept put out by this woman named Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop. And it's this idea of mirrors and windows and sliding glass doors and it's the idea that when someone who hasn't seen themselves represented sees themselves sees themselves in a book 
that that mirror can be so validating. So like affirming saying like your story actually matters, but that same mirror can be a window for another kid to be like, Oh, now I understand you better. And then at best it's a sliding glass door where these people are moving between worlds and like really getting to understand each other. Now I didn't know that when I started writing the book, Sure, (laughs) but I do think that that was like part of it is like, I was like, I, you know, to go back to like that guy who, who wrote that weird review of Sanjay and Craig, like I spent most of my life relating to characters who didn't look like me. So to me, I was like, well, if I write a book with, about a character who looks a little bit like me, that I think a lot of kids would be able to relate to him as well. But sure. it would be important to have that story out there. Well, that's great because it, you know, again, in as much as we think of our, ourselves as advanced technological creatures, at the heart of it, humans are storytellers. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. pass down knowledge through story and so when there are uh you know if you're not passing the stories down then that's the people aren't hearing them they're not relating they're not understanding i mean so the fact that you had an experience growing up and it was important to you to share it so that some other kid growing up would go oh this makes sense to me yeah now i feel validated i feel like i can because you didn't have that i mean it's I feel like, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. That, that's, yeah. that's how humans are supposed to, you know, pass down to the next generation. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I didn't even think about it that way. But, like, the historical context of that is so – that's so beautiful. Oh, This thanks. idea, like, like that, you know, like a book is not just a story. It's, like, it's actually, like – it's, like, a collective part of our history. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It creates, it creates a story about what the world is like. And I think that's – you know, that's what – the book's about a 12-year-old – uh, Indian American kid who's just beginning to realize that he might be gay mm-hmm. and he's struggling with that and he's being bullied for it. But I think at, at its core, it's also just about feeling different at 12, which I think right. is, you know, maybe the same, you know, sort of similar concepts in, in a, in a show like Sanjay and Craig. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's the thing that most kids feel in middle school. And this, this just happens to be a specific story about one way that kids feel that way that I think will be universal, you know? I mean, it's like, have you read Wonder? Do you know that book? No, I haven't read it. I mean, Wonder is about, it's like this beautiful book that became a movie and it's, and it's, it's, it's about a kid with a facial deformity and it's like his first, uh, he's been homeschooled because he has a facial deformity and, and he goes to school for the first time and it kind of follows his first year at school. And that book is such a huge hit. Now, most kids don't have, uh, facial deformities, but I think that, that the idea of like, oh, this is what a kid feels like when they feel different at school. Sure. It's also so like, so universal. Well, especially t- around like right around the time you hit puberty, you're really, you know, chemically you're also trying to, your, your identity is forming. Yeah. And I feel like most of the shit that we deal with in our adult life is sort of in service to whoever that kid was when he was about 12. Cause I think, I think in our heads, we always, we wrestle with a lot of stuff that I think happened to us around that time. If we didn't fit in, if everyone told us we were dumb, if everyone told us we were around, you know? And so we're constantly trying to sate that, that little person who was there when our identity formed. Yeah. And so this type of thing, like instilling children with healthy uh, identities and healthy values of, of themselves, like to value yourself and to know that you are validated, to know that you are capable. And you're like, I really can't think of many things that are more important in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, like, however they feel at that age will inform. And most people never get past. Like, most people just spend their entire lives imprisoned by, yeah. what, you know, whatever kind of weird stuff uh, was going on at that time. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I think it is. I'm so glad that you chose to tell the story that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so interesting that you say that because I, 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 had, a, I had an acting teacher who was like, you know, most of us are working on one or two things in our lives. Like, and so, and so are characters. Like, they have, they have one thing that sort of like happened to them at some point in their life and that's the thing. And I think that's what you're speaking about that you kind of continue to rub up against over and over yeah. and over. And it is that formative time. It's that time when you, you, you know, you decide if you, uh, if you fit in or not. And I think most people feel like they don't fit in, but, but we don't talk about it. Right. <laughs> and so everyone's like sitting in these like shadow worlds being like, oh my God, I don't fit in. I don't fit in. When I actually like most kids are struggling with that. And it's been interesting. Like, so, so because the book is for younger readers, although I have to be, um, not to be like, you know, self promotional about it, I guess. That's, you, you should, know, part, you part part do it. But it's, you know, when they, when they just send out advanced copies, it goes to adults first. Mm-hmm. They don't send these to like to kids. And so the number of adults who've like responded to it and been like, Oh, this moved me so much. Cause it reminded me of my middle school and, and not, not just South Asian or not, not LGBT uh, folk. Like, 
I had a, a woman who told me she's like in her forties and she's like, Oh my gosh, my younger brother came out to me a few years ago. And now I read this book and I'm like, Oh my gosh, if I'd had this book in middle school, I could have seen like all these behaviors and talked to him. So I feel like there's like a, a relational, there, that, I don't know what the right word is, but there, people are finding things in there that they um, relate to, you know? Well, it's yeah. understanding. I mean, like ultimately our goal with anything should be to understand, yeah, you know, to not be defensive or shout things down that we don't understand. Like when we don't understand something, it shouldn't be like, get away from me. I don't want to, you know, it should yeah. be like, Oh, how do I understand this better? Yeah. Or how can I make this person feel understood? Totally. Because maybe that is the crucial thing that they need, the element that they're missing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And if something like this allows people to understand and have conversations and make, you know, people feel welcome and okay. I mean, it, yeah, I yeah. totally see why this would be helpful for anyone who just felt like I didn't fit in in, you know, whatever my own specific way yeah. that was. I didn't feel like I fit in. And now I feel like I have more of an understanding. Or maybe I can say to that 12 year old kid in my brain, like, hey, you're okay. Like, it's yeah. okay. You're yeah. okay. You know? It's been really. So, what I was going to say earlier is that, so because the book is for younger readers, I'm like in the middle of a kind of massive book tour right now. But part of that is going to middle schools. And so, like, my first school, I was like, oh, I don't know how personal to get with these kids. You know, I tell them the book's about a kid who feels different. I kind of did this thing where I was like, have any of you ever felt different? And I was like, just think about it. Because I was, like, too afraid to, like, engage and have them. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, oh, what if this gets emotional or someone says someone's name? And But then at, like, the second or third school, I was like... I was like, have you, any of you ever felt different? And like hands were going up and these kids were like, I have alopecia and people make fun of me for it. Or kids were like, I have ADHD. And this one kid was like, oh, I made fun of a kid once because he had a disability. And we had like this discussion in front of like 700 middle schoolers about like, how did, how do you think that made the other kid feel? And he was like, well, I apologize afterwards. And the whole auditorium like, oh my started God. Clapping. And I was like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so it's interesting. Like, I feel like kids do actually want to talk about these things, but you have to like, open up like some space for them, you know, to do it. Well, this, I think this is so important because as kids, as more and more kids, I mean, I fucking growing up on the internet, I just can't even imagine a worse thing to have to navigate because on the one hand, there are places on the internet where of course you can find acceptance where maybe if in your own community, you don't, Mm -hmm. or maybe you can have anonymous conversations to where you feel safe. Like you have safe spaces. And I think that's all really important, but I feel like what happens a lot on the internet is just shouting down and uh-huh, trying uh-huh. to fit into, you know, it's like the kind of shit that happens in high school times infinity Yeah, where it's yeah. like, yeah, fuck you. If you don't agree with this, if you don't fit in, fuck you. you yeah, know? yeah. And yeah. it should be the former, but it's kind of a lot, the latter. It's too. a lot, the latter. And so being able to, you know, if someone can shut that off long enough and then just sit down and relate to a character and go, oh, I'm not flawed or weird or yeah. broken or whatever. You know, the things that make me different are actually strengths and they make me unique and they make me, you know, stand out, you know, like in a good yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, uh, you know, to embrace those things rather than to feel like you have to hide them more, you know. But but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm you know, like I'm, I'm sure there are still some communities where – it can be difficult for people to really be who they are without fear, like real fear of, you know, danger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so it's really interesting. Cause like I went to one, one school and I, so, but the first time I went to school, <laughs> I was like, well, if this book's about a kid being authentic to who he is, then I've got to be like stand in my authenticity, like in front of these kids. So I've got to say, I'm gay. And I did not know how to approach it because I like, so it like brought up so much middle school stuff for me, like going back to a middle school, which I hadn't really been in a middle school for a long time and a long time. Yeah. But I, <laughs> but I, uh, <laughs> That's a notable distinction. Yeah. Duly yeah. noted. Thank you. But I, so I like, I did it so weirdly. It was so weird. I was like, like, I didn't know how to set it up. So I was like, yeah, when I was a kid, sometimes I got made fun of for being gay. Which I am. And I feel like I like I had this like coming out moment to all these the kids. kids. Oh my god, it was so weird. And now I do this thing where I like I've learned so I show a picture of me and my husband and I say, like, you know, this is this is this is my husband. And like so I put it out there. So it's not like I'm coming out to you. It's like, right. hey, look at us. This is our dog. And uh and uh it was interesting because, like, at one school, like, everyone clapped for, like, the fact that I had a husband. I was like, I wonder if their teacher told them to, like, be, be supportive. <laughs> I, you know what I think it was? I think yeah. they realized that Hollywood is a very difficult place to maintain a relationship. And the fact that you're <laughs> totally. leading a successful marriage <laughs> is a real accomplishment. accomplishment. <laughs> it is a big accomplishment. But also, I think, you know, listen, the more 
the fact that you're willing to go around and talk to kids. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's so easy for people to get caught up in their devices or just hope that kids figure it out or whatever. But yeah. it's like they're fucking people. You yeah. know, it's like yeah. you don't have to talk down to them. You don't have to necessarily be deferential to them. You can just talk to them as though they were human beings. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. They get it, and I think they appreciate that. <clears throat> yeah, you know, it, it, it's like. I will say that I went to this one school where a teacher stopped me afterwards and she was like, you're very brave. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, I'm gay, but I'm not out to my students. And so there is still that, you know? And so it's, 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 I think there's like that, there's a mix, you know? I think, I feel like, um, I feel like we're at such a different place than we were when I was growing up. But then you look at like the political landscape, not to get super political. Sure. But, and obviously there's a great divide happening around that. And, and we have a government that's sort of like, not sort of, but is actively, you know, anti LGBT and anti immigrant and anti, you know, all these things that we thought we'd come so far with. And so I don't, so it's, it's an interesting time to be writing uh, um, a book with a lead character who looks like this. Yeah. And is struggling with these things, but probably the the best time, yeah, 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 to make sure that you know you're feeding young minds, the future generation, you know, who will take over someday. Yeah, we're not gonna, you know, we we don't get a lot of time. I know, like really, and, I know. And the older we get, the faster it goes, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so. It almost <laughs> there's almost one point of view that's like you got to go to every school and you need to take this <laughs> right, book right. now. Like, what yeah. are you still doing here? You know, it's like time's running yeah. out. We got to get this. You know, like well, we that's gotta... what's so fascinating because teachers they've they've gotten the book and they've pre screened it and that's why they invite me to come. And yet at those same schools, you know, there's a teacher who can't or feels like she can't come out to her her students. So. So there's, yeah, there's a, you know, there's a, um, it's also super personal, I think, in terms of coming out, like it was National Coming Out Day just a few days ago. Yeah, right. I feel like the the big move now is like on your own time, there's no pressure, you be yourself, which I think was different when, you know, I feel like I remember being in college and there were like a National Coming Out Day when I was closeted. So it was like super scary. People were like, Jody Foster's gay. Like all, like people like, ch like mm -hmm. putting like sidewalk chalk signs, like outing people. And that was like a big, that was like the, where we were, I think in that discussion years ago when I was <laughs> yeah. like in college. Yeah. 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 And now I think we're in a, a different place where it's like, we're respectful about people moving in their own time. I think like that as things change, as they evolve, they're just, you know, that's like, that's just the nature of as things grow, you know? Yeah. And so, but it, 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 but I wonder if, um, you know, as, as a performer, I feel like maybe performers are given more leeway than say like this person who is a teacher, but maybe, but who knows? Like I don't know, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Did you I have? Mean, a, did, um, you have a, did you have a talk with this this teacher who came who told you this information? Did you talk to her about it much, or were you just no, like? No, it was like oh, on my luck. way out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good luck with that. No, <laughs> <laughs> it was on my way out, and so there, I didn't have much time to engage with her. But it was interesting that she sought me out, and I, you know, I've I've talked to other authors who've done this kind of thing, and there's a very different thing um, at a bookstore event where it's mostly adults and people who come to to see it. I think are already on board with all the ideas because they they know you know they they well you know they're there for me I guess yeah. so um, versus at these assemblies, I mean, kids are crazy and I show them clips of cartoons and, you know, they go nuts and everyone knows the theme songs of things. They get up and sing like the Sanjay and Craig theme song. And so there's, you know, it's like a little bit of like a rock, rock star sort of like quality. And then you try to get a little serious with them. But the book, the book is also very funny. So I don't want them to think like, Hey, this is a, you know, you're going to be crying all, you know, it's, it's emotional, but I think it's also very funny. But, um, I've, I've had authors say that, you know, there's almost like a few people in that audience who really needed you to be there that yeah. day. And I think maybe she was one of those people who was like, you know, needed, needed someone who could stand up in front of all those kids and be like, I'm gay. And, you know, maybe hopefully that, hopefully that at least gives her some comfort. I don't know. I yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And so you said you were closeted mm -hmm. in college. So what was it that finally, like, what was the, what was the thing that allowed you to feel comfortable yeah. finally coming out? Ooh, I don't know, man. It took me so long, and it's interesting talking about the internet because I feel like um, when you're when you're talking about like seeing you know stuff on the internet and all that, I think as actors, 
like we get so much of that too. And mm-hmm. I remember, I remember being closeted sort of in the beginning parts of my career and seeing like message, like of course I'd Google myself <laughs> and seeing message boards like, <laughs> that's he's never so a good gay. Idea. That's yeah. never a good idea. Yeah, by never the way, to a good yourself. idea. Never. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's like watching a car wreck. You have to do it though. I, I can't imagine. Do you, do you look at stuff on the internet? No, I no. mean, it, I did in the early, I, I used to yeah. like, and I feel like it took me years and years to keep learning that there's no benefit to it because right. you're, you're going to get, you know, you're either going to get this, yo, you're so funny or you're, you, I, I hate your work. You're yeah, a piece yeah. of shit. And I don't know if either of those is necessarily um, super helpful in a way no. because they're both just sort of like one, one just uh, coddles your ego and the other one shatters your ego, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm, they're mm-hmm. both kind of ego choices yeah and so i i just don't know and listen i so appreciate you know the many times that i would engage with one troll out of <laughs> right. uh, you know a thousand people and i would feel bad because uh, the nice people would be like why are you engaging with the one person that's mm. something shitty to you when when there are those of us who've said nice things to you and you've never responded and i would yeah. go oh my god yes well obviously you're seeing my personal insecurities and issues you know oh my gosh and yeah, so, yeah, yeah 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 so it just I don't know. There's just no benefit. There's just no real benefit to it. Yeah. You know? it's yeah. So no, it only makes you feel. It's it's like a false high if it's good, and it's a it's a terrible low if it's bad. But that's why yeah. a book like this is important because yeah. if if a kid feels comfortable with who they are at a young age, they won't necessarily need to Google themselves right. later on in life right. because <laughs> they will feel like they are enough. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, yeah. My name is Blake Pancholi. I'm here to prevent you from Googling <laughs> yourselves in the future. Oh, I got my new presentation. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> this will make sense to you in about 10 or 20 years, and you'll be thankful. Totally. Yeah, you'll be thankful. And totally. And so, uh, so anyway, you were saying, like, you would Google yourself, and you would say... Oh, and you see all these things that are, like, you know, he said okay like is he out and like all these kind of like message board things you know now i'm like it's so nice people were talking about me at all but <laughs> <laughs> but i uh, but i i i think the thing that made me comfortable honestly is i've been in my relationship for 15 years oh wow yeah and i think that there was just a point where i was like this is more important to me than feeling scared yeah or feeling like i can't be myself and you know but i was like you know i don't i don't love this about myself but i was that guy who was scared of like the 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 media like scared of like red carpets and stuff like that because i was like is it okay to be gay in hollywood but also i think like you were saying like that trauma of 12 like i think that i think that you know it's so interesting because the entertainment industry is still so it's so open now and we have like all these people who've who've kind of broken through that like they're out actors who are working all the time but I still think that there's some stigma around that in terms of like what that's going to mean for your career. I think a young actress especially might feel some fear around that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think that for me, um, a lot of it was like the 12 year old. Yeah. 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 Because I, uh, I had a friend who came out at like 50 and he had resisted it for a long time, but then he realized that for him it was, he wanted to speak to younger people mm. to so that they felt okay, so that they didn't feel like they couldn't until they were fifty. You yeah, know? like yeah. he, it was again sort of passing that experience down and saying like, you know, whatever you're feeling, whatever inner conflict you're feeling about this, you're okay, and you know, and uh, and I'm here to help, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, I think you know, with whatever you're talking about, I feel like as humans, that's one of the best things you can do is sort of you know, like pass information down, pass Mm -hmm, experience mm -hmm. down, help people in the way that, you know, parents do and should like, Hey, I know you're going to make your own mistakes, but let me help you at least feel okay. And feel like, you know, here's some of the things that I did and you're going to, you're going to be okay. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, like when you, when I engage with, um, young people, there's that benefit that, that because they are fans of the cartoons, they're like they're I, th- I think i don't know i haven't you know done a focus group with them but i think that they're like oh if if that's weird at all to them to be like oh that's your husband or you're gay i think that it's like eclipsed by like oh but you're sanjay or right you're, so so there i think that like changes the discourse for them like not that they're having discourse but that changes their like their way of thinking around it. we're like oh well maybe it's not so weird if i thought it was weird before yeah know? and now and now i mean obviously the hope is that 
you know, that when you go and say, oh, hi, I'm Malik, this, you know, here's a picture of me and my husband, people are like, yeah, cool. You know, like, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. They're, that it's, that there's no, like, oh, can you Hesitation. explain? Hesitation. Yeah, <laughs> there's no, yeah. like, trying to, like, oh, okay, you know, yeah. or it's just like, yeah, that's, right, of course right. it is, you know, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, the story of the book, can you just talk a little bit about his journey and, and, uh, and what the, what the arc of it is and and also when are you going to turn this into an animated show yeah. at some point um we are actively pitching it out right now and I, I feel like we have some interest so it'd be it'd be fun to see this turn into either in my mind because it's like a beginning middle and an end it feels like a movie but there's actually been some like tv interest and animation would be so fun yeah <laughs> would be so fun but uh yeah so the book so the book's about um 12 year old rahul kapoor uh he's indian american um, and he's being bullied at school yeah, for both his cultural identity and his perceived sexual identity. Mm-hmm. You know, kids think he's gay. He doesn't even know for him for sure for himself. Um, and he's got, uh, he's got his anxiety plays out in compulsive ways. I was a little bit of a checker as a kid. I don't have, I don't, I don't have a full blown disorder, but I have, um, OCD like symptoms that pop up every now and then. And that's kind of what I put into the book. So he's like checking stove, the ch- the stove and checking locks. And, um, one night his grandfather who, uh, who's his favorite person in the world. And also one of my favorite characters in the book kind of sees this going on and they're watching Bollywood movies together. And, uh, he tells him the story um, and when Rahul hears a story, he leaves it thinking that if he's just the best at something, all of his other problems will disappear. Mm-hmm. You know, and I th- you know, just a metaphor for the idea that if, if he can just prove he belongs, that, that he, people will see him as a winner and not, not a loser. And so he, but he's got these two problems. He doesn't know what he's going to be the best at, and he doesn't know what's going to happen if he, uh, if he fails. And so he has his best friend, Chelsea, and they go off on these little adventures trying to find the thing that he's going to, um, be the best at. And I won't give it away, but I will say that he gets very, very, very close. And I don't know if he wins or loses, but on the way he learns a lot, um, a lot about himself. And that's why it's called the best at it. Cause he's on a quest to, uh, to prove himself. What I find interesting is that usually, when something stands out and other people try to suppress it, mm-hmm. that the person who is being suppressed is feels like they're onto some like they're onto something unique, you know, like that they're a unique, beautiful thing that doesn't necessarily conform, and that's how uh, that's how revolutions happen. That's how new mm. things happen. That's how growth happens. But people, but by and large groups of people can be so like no this is the status quo and it can't change and when something really beautiful and unique and and seemingly different comes along that they're trying to suppress it almost feels like oh but that's where right. the, that's a special unique thing yeah and they're afraid of that change and that means that this unique person is onto something yeah and i feel yeah. like that also happens like you know when you hear about any great success stories of uh, inventions or ideas or movies or whatever it's like everyone said no to this because they were like oh it's too weird and then all of a sudden it just breaks through somewhere and it's like oh this was the most revolutionary right. thing ever and other people couldn't wrap their minds around it and that is a good sign yeah because that means this thing is so you know like so beautiful and different in a wonderful way mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um yeah do you feel like his journey is uh, you said it's at the end without giving anything away. He maybe wins or maybe loses. <laughs> yeah. You said he learns a lot. Does he himself by the end of the story feel comfortable with who he is? Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting. I wrote, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of things that I wrote in this book that are, um, they're, they're emotional moments or conversations that I didn't have when I was 12 that I waited to like my late twenties or mid twenties to like, to have because I didn't have the language for them. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't even know, like, I didn't really have the language to talk about being gay. Like there was no one in my school in Tampa, Florida that was out. Oh, you grew up in Tampa? Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh my yeah. God. My dad lived the last few years of his life part-time in Bradenton. Oh really? Yeah. 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 Florida is like a, interesting place it's, it's, it's a thing <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a thing it's its own thing <laughs> totally totally i'm actually gonna go back there uh in a few weeks to like go back to my high school so that'll be my oh, school interest oh my <laughs> yeah, god yeah oh my god the, it's gonna be so crazy you're gonna walk in the smell you have to you have to fight the like you'll see the sights and then you'll smell the hallways and be like okay <laughs> right. no i'm a grown man i'm not still in high school <laughs> totally. i gotta let go of all the high school shit oh you my know? gosh it's so like when you, when you ask kids like sometimes like hey is middle school like hard for you guys they're like no 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 we love it they love it and i think 
think maybe it's kids we thought we loved it. We didn't even know the trauma was happening. And then you grew up and you're like, oh my gosh, it was so hard. What the fuck? Um, I forget what we were talking about. You're talking about going back to Tampa. You're going to go back to Tampa yeah, yeah, yeah. and talk at your high school about yes, it. Yes, so that'll be, that'll be, I think, like very, very interesting. But, and they've, they've embraced it. Like they've read the book and they're, you know, that was, they were, that was a person who was like, I don't want you to just come talk to the middle school. She was like, I feel like the upper schoolers need to know this book too. Like the high schoolers need to know this book. And she's like, and I want to organize an alumni event because I feel like adults could, could read this book. And so I, I feel like there's been just like a lot of, um, a lot of love for it, which is, which is really cool. Oh, which that's is really good. Cool. Yeah. Wait, did you, you wrote, do you have more than one book? Or you have, uh, no, I just have one book. One book, But yeah, mine, yeah. mine was a, like, um, it was sort of like a self-help book, but with the guts of an autobiography. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it was just about, like, overcoming addi- addiction and obsessive thinking and how yeah. to try to use that for, for good. I mean, it's because it's, eh, I don't know. I mean, I love, I wish I could have written a book like you wrote, which is basically a way to get information through storytelling rather than like, here's what you should do. You yeah, know? Yeah, 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 and yeah. so, uh, I mean, I hear that, but I also feel like there's, there's standing in, cause those are pretty vulnerable things to talk about, right? Like obsessive thinking and addiction and yeah. And, and for me, I mean, I guess they are, I don't know, but for me it was basically the same kind of thing where I thought like, Oh, well if this, you know, keeps a person or people from, making the same mistakes or maybe they feel weird or they don't understand why their brain works in a certain way or why they drink every day or whatever, then maybe this will get them to ask some of the right questions. Like it yeah. really is just that yeah. kind of thing of like, Hey, if this helps anybody by all means, please, yeah. I'm totally, I'm totally happy to share that. If, if you can make something useful out of, yeah. out of it, you know, did you use humor in it? Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, you know, like right. I can't, I can't help that, you know, like it, 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 that's just how I communicate ideas. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it was uh, it was also very cathartic. And I wonder if this for you was, you know, on the one hand, it's it's serving all this, you know, it's it's serving all these different things. Like it's helping kids be comfortable with who they are, helping kids understand kids that maybe they don't understand, helping adults understand their own lives, other people's lives. And then for you personally – like what an exercise to basically go back and tell your 12 year old self like, yeah, Hey, you're yeah. okay. You know, like that is an, inc- I mean, you know, people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars going to therapists for decades just to be yeah. able to do something like that. Yeah. yeah. No one in this room. For you, that must've felt like, yeah. Well, so now I think we were talking earlier about like, uh, does he, does he com- come to be comfortable in himself? And I, I, um, I wrote, so I did the audio book of, um, of my own book and, and it was interesting, like reading it out loud and, um, and by the way, I just, Paste Magazine just called it one of the best audiobooks of October, what? alongside a book narrated by Meryl Streep. What? <laughs> I know. So, okay. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> but there was a moment in the recording where I got like surprisingly very emotional. And I think, a, I think a big, it, it was, it was the scene where he does finally like stand up to the guy who's just making his life a living hell. And he says, what is it that you want to hear? Do you want to hear that I'm gay? I'm gay. And he like finally says it. And, and a group of his friends, um, all kind of react in their own way but they're all really supportive of him and i and i realized like oh i didn't have that at 12 like i I waited for so long and so i think part of it is like writing um like giving language and so speaking of like obsessive behaviors so my initial pitch for this book was super comedic i think just because you know like like you said like i'm used to using that voice to tell it's a defense mechanism that too yes Yeah. yeah yeah but i so you know he has these obsessive compulsive um behaviors and my pitch on it was like it's hilarious he's checking the locks every night and he's checking under the bed and and my editor who was who was amazing was like i feel like you want to i feel like you want to um i feel like you're like avoiding going to the heart of this a little bit and so there's there's a there's a scene that i really love that we added in towards the end of the writing process where his dad notices the behavior and like has a conversation with him in, in his bedroom with the bed pulled away from the wall. So it doesn't catch on fire from the, from the outlet that's mm-hmm. like too close to the bed skirt. And, and the dad doesn't like, he doesn't have all the language to talk about it. And the kids certain Rahul certainly doesn't know like what's going on with him. But I was like, Oh, but like, so he, I wanted it to be real in that way that we don't always know how to talk about these things, but at least we can have the conversation whether or not, it comes out perfectly. And so I think that he's, 
he's comfortable with himself in the end of the book in a way, but he's also a 12 year old kid. And it kind of ends with him contemplating like, what does it mean to be the best? And I, and he doesn't say out loud being the best is being yourself. Like he doesn't, he doesn't really know that he just knows that he's been on a journey and that he's become more, um, more confident in who he is. But I don't think he like, can piece that together just yet. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. he's still 12 years old. 12 he's, years still, old. Yeah. he's still got a yeah. lot of stuff to learn. <laughs> yeah. He still has to have life experiences. Yeah. And, and, uh, and again, I do think that, you know, uh, <clears throat> those growth periods are certainly important, but being the best at yourself, the underpinning of that is that you have to know yourself. Yeah. And you have to be comfortable with yourself because how can you be the best <clears throat> at something that you don't know and aren't comfortable with? <laughs> right. You can't. Right. Like, you have to. Yeah. It, and 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 if you really rip it all away, being the best at being yourself means understanding who you are and accepting who you are. And so, you know, in a way, like I, I it, at least it feels like he's probably on the right path. I mean, maybe this, uh, you know, this, this could be a book series at some point. <laughs> yeah, that'd be amazing. You know, like yeah, you yeah. could. This could be like what happens to him in you know tenth grade, right? And right. Then it's like it, you know. A junior year, senior year, you know, like yeah. how does he evolve? And so maybe that's – maybe this is just the beginning of his story. Yeah. I love that. And um, I will tell my editor. <laughs> <laughs> I should write Thank like you. three Thank more you. of these, <laughs> yeah. my friend Chris said. Uh, this would be a great series. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> a 15-year relationship, what relationship advice do you – now, I've, my wife and I have been together uh, – was 19 – F- uh, four and a half, almost five years. Yeah, uh, five years. We've been together five years. That's and we've a been long married time. Three. Yeah. So fifteen years. Like, what's the? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I, well, I think like I think I'm very lucky <laughs> because I think he puts up with a lot. Because um, I am like a kind of neurotic, like crazy person, and especially you know like leading up to like a book launch or, or, or having, you know, like the pressures of acting work and just like that whole thing. And, but he's like very forgiving. So I, I would say one, find someone who's like, <laughs> who's going to support you <laughs> through all of that stuff. But I, yeah, I mean, I think that we're like really good at talking. Like we, it's not that we don't disagree about things or we don't have, um, like fights every now and then, but I feel like we're pretty good about addressing them, Yeah, you know, like and pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah, and also we're codependent. So, <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What's the secret to, to the last five? Well, I guess it's just that um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, like we neither one of us ever like like if we ever do have a disagreement, we don't go to bed upset with yeah. each other. Yeah, you know, and that we always know like. Um, the relationship is never at stake. Yeah. You know, the stakes are never, you know, even if we have a, an argument about something, it's like, well, that's just about this one dumb thing. I, but we, you know, I'm ne- we're, we're here for each other no matter yeah, what, yeah. you know, like that's, that's kind of always running in the background, no matter, no matter what. I think that is, that is like the key that you can get angry at the other person without the fear that they're going to like pack their bags and leave. Yeah. Like that's, I think that's huge in a relationship. And also understanding like when, you know, uh, when I'm 1000% in the wrong or just being cranky or Mm -hmm, I'm tired mm -hmm. or whatever, it's like, you know, you have those moments where you're like, damn it, I don't understand why this, and that's probably because I'm being <laughs> yeah. a jerk right now, and totally. this has nothing to do with you, and god damn it, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. You know, it's it's just being oh, able but that's to, hard, right? <laughs> well, it is, but it isn't, because it's being able to be vulnerable with someone else, and, and, and being able to, you know, like, admit, uh, yeah, you know, we all are cranky sometimes, or yeah. we all, yeah. you know, like... Sometimes we get caught up in our own stuff and we're not, you know, it's like, it. yeah, but knowing at the end of the day, like, but if you needed me to, I would drop everything I'm doing for anything that you need. Yeah. And I'm never, you know, like, and neither of us are, you know, like we have these rings that aren't just for show, you know, <laughs> right, like right. that it, it means like, you know, we're not, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. So it, it, it that, that part to me is what I love because. You know, d- dating can be like I, I feel b- bad for friends who date and they just, 
You know, it's like, oh, they, you know, they te- they didn't hear back from, they had a couple great dates and they didn't hear back or something just like that other person just bolted and yeah. they, they didn't know if they did something wrong and they'll never get resolution, you know. And it's also just like weird. such a tough world, like just to find people to date. I mean, I haven't, I haven't done that in so long. Yeah. But I remember there was, when I first moved to New York, I was like coming out of a relationship and so there was like a year or something like that where I was single. And it, I was like, oh, this is why Sex in the City is a show. Because you meet the weirdest people. Yeah. <laughs> no offense to anyone who I went on a date with. <laughs> but, like, but like, it's so, like, you're so lucky to find that person, you know, that you actually like gel with and who does all those things that you just said. And, and by the way, like, I feel like the number one thing that, that when we're in a fight that makes me like fight even harder is when he's right. Of course. <laughs> like when he's like, you're just being like this. I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> That's right. I am. How dare you know that? <laughs> but then that's the thing, right? They know they know you so well. <laughs> well, also in the business that we're in, the challenging thing about dating is that so many people are, you know, here or here in New York or whatever for the advancement of themselves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so they're very, like, everyone's all, we're all focused on our careers. We're all focused on ourselves. We're all focused on that. And so... You know, it can be difficult for people to who just don't want anything to get in the way of that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the unfortunate truth is that, you know, that path of personal pursuit doesn't all really lead anywhere. You know, like it yeah. doesn't. At the end of the day, we do need to connect with other people and we do need to not put ourselves first <laughs> all yeah, the time. Yeah. And, you know, so being able to do that is important. And also just sort of knowing, like, you know, we're going to grow together and we're right. going to, you know, and, and hopefully our, you know, our sort of philosophical goals gel and they're complementary and, you know, and, and yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it is, it just is important to, it is important to make things not about yourself. Yeah. Sometimes. And I think that kind of harkens back to, to when you were asked about um, what was it that made you finally feel comfortable in being more out Mm -hmm. and i think part of it was like whatever i'm afraid of about this career feels slightly less important or maybe a lot less important than this relationship yeah and i you know i think that i do think a lot of actors like struggle with that i think and especially in these industry towns like new york and la that it's like you have you're you everyone's fighting so hard so you have to do everything you can to get ahead and if that means like people go by the wayside then people go by the wayside and i just got to a point where i was i was like that's i don't think that's a good way to live yeah i mean i don't think it's i i don't if you had every material thing you wanted but you didn't feel comfortable or you weren't happy you know what value would the those material things have you wouldn't you know like how much mo- there's an, an infinite amount of money is not going to fill whatever sort of thing that you need until you, you know, like until you love yourself, like yourself, be able to say like, you know, I'm enough. I don't need, you know, like it's fun to have stuff, but it doesn't mean everything in mm-hmm, the world. Mm-hmm. What means the most is that I'm comfortable with me. I have a partner that loves me and I love and we, you know, like, so yeah. And maybe that's just a byproduct of like, Getting older, I think, you know, yeah. there's a lot of ambition in youth mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. we're trying to establish when we're young, you know, like our place in the world. And it's easy it's easy to look at things as a very one-dimensional representation of like, aha, that means I'm somebody, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But then when if you get there or you get close to whatever, you're like, oh, this doesn't feel at yeah. all like that one-dimensional picture I had in my <laughs> mind of what this was supposed to look totally. like. You know, the day-to-day stuff is really where life is, the living yeah. of it, you know. I, mean, I think that, like, weirdly, that's part of, I think, the book is, like, a winning is not everything, you know. It's yeah. like winning is not, uh, it's fun. Yeah. It's certainly fun, right? It's fun. That one-dimensional picture is fun for a little while, but it doesn't, like... It doesn't um, – it's not the thing that you hold on to forever, you know? Yeah, and also, like, if you're talking about just winning a competition, there's us- there's often a cost mm-hmm, of mm-hmm, winning, mm-hmm. you know? It's yeah, not just yeah. – you know? And then also, if you're so obsessed with just winning a thing, you know, you sort of get that Pyrrhic victory where it's like, yes, you won, but – but you're bloodied and you're <laughs> right. at what cost, you know, <laughs> right, did you right. win that trophy that you thought was so important? And I love that you put it in the, in the context of like, but it's the journey that he takes. Yeah. That's really, you know, that's really what it's, what it's really all about. Yeah. I would imagine. 
there's a moment where they they he joins the mathletes. That's why he's wearing that shirt that says pie on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're at this competition, and everyone's gotten like a different answer than him. And he's like, but I think mine's right. And they're like, they're like, well, why why are you right? And he's like, because I'm the one who won districts or whatever. And he, it's like that that moment where all his friends are like, wow, you're a you're kind of becoming a monster, <laughs> you know, about winning this thing. And I, and he has a moment where he's like, oh, it's fine, you guys, you guys, because there is that's the cost. I think it's like you, if you're, do you want to have friends or do you want to? I mean, ideally, you have both, I guess, but, yeah. <laughs> but but you don't. That's not always the way it works, right? Well, also, so. but but ha, do you want to have real mm. relationships and real friendships, or do you want you know, or do you just want to win? And do you want do you want those relationships because of that? It's like yeah. the friends should help you. <laughs> Best friends Hall of Fame. <laughs> uh, you know, the like you should all uplift each other. It's not like. Uh, thanks for being friends and you're standing on someone's right. face, you know, yes. holding up the trophy. And so, you know, because, again, look, at the end of the day, and I hope this doesn't sound morose, but it's like, ultimately it all ends up the same. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, we all we all end up, the you know, the, the, the story ends the same for <laughs> yeah. everybody, ultimately, yeah. you know. And so what kind of good are you putting into this world during yeah. that process? And, you know, and so I, again, I just think it's beautiful that you wrote the story and I, and I think it's so wonderful that you share it. And especially in this way, uh, in a, in a humorous, but touching way so that, you know, other people out there don't feel alone or don't feel weird or don't feel, you know, the way that maybe you did when you were growing up mm-hmm, or the way mm-hmm. that I felt, isolated because I was into nerdy shit and there were only three other kids in my school who were into that stuff and yeah. I didn't understand sports you know right, like right. it's like everyone has a version of you know although I think thought, for, yeah. for his character his, his stakes probably feel high like they feel very high because he's struggling with cultural and sexual identity at the same time yeah, um, yeah. but uh, you know it but I think like I think most of us are dealing with multiple things you know what i mean like i feel like kids i mean yes i mean i know i said earlier that we have like one or two things that we're always working on but and i and i think that is that is true in a way but i also feel like you know you have kids who have adhd and their parents are getting divorced or right. you know what i mean like where it's it's so rare that you're just like oh i have this one right part of myself that i don't like that i'm questioning you know i think i think there's um that idea of like intersectionality and you know these things that come together is now we have a word for it i feel like when we were young people were just like oh you've got a lot of problems or whatever <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah and inter- you know these intersectional identities like the y- you are more than one thing you know yeah but it's it because people are complex, everyone's unique, and everyone yeah. is a unique sum total of molecules and experiences and and desires and hopes and you know and and by and large, you know everyone wants simple answers to think simple answers, but it's like but we're not simple creatures, yeah, no one yeah. is a no one is simple everyone has is, 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 all a, complex, is, is, yeah. is a unique you know and so Again, I think it's to use the that term intersectional and what he's going through. Hopefully, it you know people will read this, and even if they don't relate to his specific um, to the specific things that he's wrestling with and going through, they'll be able to see themselves and like. But I, uh, you know, I experience X, Y, and Z, and so I can understand, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. And then, where else? The, where else is the book tour taking you? Book tour. Well, tonight uh, here in LA. I know I don't know when this is going to air, but tonight here in LA with Randall Park, which I'm really excited about. Oh, We're doing cool! A little in conversation together. That's awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's great, and uh, I'm like excited to talk to him. We, we so we've done New York, which is really fun. Tina Fey did it with me, which is like oh, so fun. Oh, great! Yeah, it was so cool. She came out and supported. And then we did Pennsylvania and Ohio and Denver. I'm here in LA. Then I go to the Boston Book Festival. I go to Austin, Texas, and Washington D.C. And then at the very tail end, Miami and Tampa. So there's a lot. I'm like kind of crisscrossing the country. Yeah. You know what? I feel like I want to make for you, um, and I can get all this information. I want to make you a tour shirt. Oh my gosh. Because yes. I, I feel like I want to make you the, a best at it tour shirt. I would love that. That'd be so we, fun. Because my company like can make shirts and stuff. And so I'm, I feel like I want to make you a best at it shirt. Oh my shirt. gosh. Thank Especially you, Chris. Because you didn't have this Sunjay well, Craig t-shirt that, that I'm wearing <laughs> right now. And I feel really bad that for whatever reason you didn't get one. Well, I'm going to snatch it after we finish <laughs> up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to... I'm just like... In a couple of weeks, I'll be like, honey, have you seen my Sunday <laughs> yeah. Craig D-shirt? How did he and do that? And I'm going to see you like on some talk show wearing it. I'm like, 
Pancholi! You know, <laughs> and you're going to have my son getting Crenshaw. But it was always, uh, it was a real pleasure to do that show with you. And, you know, I just, I just think you're such a wonderful dude. And anytime you're here, anytime you want to hang out or anytime you need anything, you know, it uh, the the Sanjay and Craig years were really special. They yeah. were special. They yeah. were really special to me. And and I and I really respond to people who still bring it up. And mm-hmm. people still do. Like, yeah. oh my God, Sanjay and Craig. You yeah. know that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe yeah, it's we- been fun to it's been fun to hear like how many kids are. So I guess it's in reruns. It must be right. The people I'm are sure still watching it. it and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, networks are not in habit of of just shelving content anymore. Like yeah. everything. So I would imagine it's either if Nickelodeon has an app, or they might still be running it sometimes. And yeah, you know, I yeah. imagine it's probably still out there somewhere. Yeah. But I almost feel like I want to. Uh, I wondered if I came, when you came in if I said, "Dude," if you would say, <laughs> "What's up?" I, <laughs> I mean, there. It, it is funny to know you, and but still be a fan of the show because there are a couple times where you talk and you get into a certain register where I hear Sanjay. Oh my gosh, I'm like, yeah. that's Sanjay. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm Craig. Like, <laughs> that's, I know, I know. Well, kids are all, because because Baljeet on Phineas and Ferb was, you're so high. And so like kids are like, oh, do that. And then like, can you do the Sanjay voice? I'm like, well, it's kind of just, it's kind of just me. I'm basically like a 12 year old child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, like, I got, I got the same different. thing too. They're like, do Craig. And I'm like, I am doing him. <laughs> <laughs> this is him. He is just me, but loud. <laughs> uh, like, oh my God, that's it. Yeah. I remember when we were recording Barnyard, we'd record as a group. We uh-huh. always recorded as a full cast, which was incredible. Um, and occasionally they would bring kids in. Because I think the idea of watching adults record <laughs> right. sounds fun. Like you're going to watch cartoons. Yeah. Within 30 seconds, kids were so fucking bored because they're like, they're just watching adults talking right. at podi- at like In a music stands yeah. and microphones. So it never quite paid off the way that yeah. we wanted. But we did do that one live reading at SF Sketchfest of a song. Oh my Craig. gosh, that's right. That was so early on, too, right? Yeah. 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 How did that, I can't remember how that went over. Did it go over well? It went think, great. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> It was yeah. fun. My gosh, it was so long ago. Maybe one yeah. of these days, maybe one of these days, we'll get the gang together <laughs> oh, and just God. read. That'd be so fun. Just read the Butt Doctor episode. Linda Hunt. <laughs> Linda Hunt. <laughs> yeah, Linda Cardellini. She's Linda Cardellini's done all right. It turns out. I guess so. Yeah, and Tony. All everyone. It's it's been. It's like the lots of things. I think that when we started, they were like, "Oh, everyone's here," and then everyone just kind of like took off and. But we made it work. We, we made did. It happen. We made we it work. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here, Malik. Thank you for having me. The best at it. You Yay. should get the book. It is available. Oh, my gosh. Actually holding... Tour t-shirts will be available soon. <laughs> I love the smell of a book. You know what we should no. do that would be fun? Because you've signed this book. And I wonder, be fun to, d- I want to figure out if we can do some sort of a giveaway with, oh. the, with the signed book. Oh, my gosh. So yeah. maybe when this posts, we'll, I'll post something on Instagram. And maybe it's like a... Maybe it's a bit of Sanjay and Craig trivia or something, and then like the first person to answer it, I'll you know we'll send them a signed book. Oh, that'd or be amazing! That'd yeah, be really I can fun. send you more for that. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd cool. be awesome. Yeah, awesome. Um, anything right. else you want to plug or promote or anything? No, I thought this was such a great conversation. It was so fun. You're so good at this. Oh no, as please! I, know. I just I, it's been fun for me just to catch up with you. Oh good, like, yeah, I, me I, too. Halfway through, I forgot that this was for the podcast. For the, yeah, right. I'm like, God, I just haven't talked to my friend Malik in a really long time. Yeah. Um, but is there one last bit of advice? or inform- anything that you want to say to people who are struggling with who they are, struggling to, you know, with d- d- acceptance or, or if, they're, if they're close to someone and they're trying to understand someone that they know is struggling, like what's something that you would say? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I talk about with young people around this book is um, being an ally because I think he's got a couple allies in the book. He's got his grandfather, he's got his best friend, Chelsea, who really like support him. And so I, w- I would just say like, find your allies and be a good ally, mm-hmm. like be a, be, a, be a good friend. Like we know, we know when people need a little extra help and sometimes I think, you know, like our own egos get in the way of that. Like, I don't want to say anything or I don't want to do anything, but, but there's, there's, I feel like if it's well-intentioned, there's like never any harm in saying like, do you need a lot, a little extra help? Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. The this end. is so awesome. Looking for a pet one day. Santa found a talking snake. And the perfect match was made. Jumped into his arms to say, dude, what's up? Sanjay and Craig The stuff they get to is insane Sanjay and Craig They're in the Best Friends Hall of Fame Sanjay and Craig There is no Best Friends Hall of Fame They made it up! 
ID 10T scanning complete. Enjoy your burrito.